My name is Curtis Taylor, and I serve as the Executive Director of the Alcohol Drug Council of North Carolina. Our agency operates an information and referral hotline for any North Carolina citizen that is seeking services for substance use disorder. Alliance Health is one of seven local management entities slash managed care organizations in our state. Our partnerships with the LMEs are imperative as we provide services and help for any North Carolina citizen that needs it. Today we are highlighting a unique program and a partnership between Alliance Health and the Durham County Sheriff's Office. Carlisle Johnson, I'm Director of Provider Network Strategic Initiatives for Alliance Health. Alliance Health has been working to uh, improve access to evidence-based medication-assisted treatment for the last several years, and we saw a wonderful opportunity in Durham to work with the Sheriff's Department, to work with multiple providers and partners in the community to expand access to treatment and connect people who need treatment while they're in the Durham Detention Center. Good morning, my name is Major E. Baysmore, Durham County Sheriff's Office Detention Services Division, Supervised Programs and Administration. Clarence Burkhead, Sheriff of Durham County. Yes, sir. That's simple. So we've been working with a number of partners, including the Durham Sheriff's Office, uh, Public Health, UNC, Duke, and, and many others, to, wow. to figure out a way to get people access to treatment while they're in the detention center and then connect them to, to treatment afterwards. Today we are highlighting our new uh, innovative medicated supportive treatment service uh, and as we know it out in the community is called MAT. This treatment project focuses on opioid use disorder mm -hmm. and for most jails in the country if you go into jail with an opioid use disorder and are receiving treatment, say methadone or buprenorphine or Vivitrol, you do not get that treatment while you're in the jail. Mm -hmm. And so we started to look at this issue in Durham and figure out a way to make sure that we could not only maintain people on the medication that they're on when they come into the jail setting, but also over time we're, we're moving towards starting people on medication-assisted treatment while they're in the detention center. Medication-supported uh, treatment the, what the program entails is helping individuals with an opioid use disorder mm -hmm. um, that are detained here in our facility and we provide them medication mm -hmm. uh, while they're in, being detained here in the facility. When people come into our facility, my main goal is to get them prepared to go back out into the community, back into society. If they have an addiction, uh, or they're suffering from a mental illness, we want to do everything that we possibly can to assist them in that recovery process, connecting them with the resources that they need, and also taking care of them while they're here so that when they go back out into the community, they're better prepared and better equipped to, to, to transition back into society. Um, we have a number of partners out in the community, and I think that's what makes this partnership so phenomenal. I want to start out with Alliance. Um, Alliance has been at the table and they have been at the forefront of helping us. Uh, UNC has been out at the forefront and helping us. Duke University uh, has been out in the front and helping us. Durham, Durham County and our commissioners have been out in the forefront. Uh, we're happy to be one of the uh, large, largest agencies in the South that are now uh, employing this uh, effort uh, by partnering with Alliance. It's been very successful so far. I think we've had uh, nine or ten individuals come through it. And it's, I think the, the stigma comes from people not really understanding uh, what we're trying to do here. Again, these individuals come to us. Uh, some of them have, are already in a treatment program. Uh, they made a mistake. They broke the law, so they get sentenced to a uh, short-term uh, jail sentence. Uh, so I think it's incumbent upon us to continue their treatment uh, to, again, help them with their addiction so that when they're released, they're better equipped to, to, to get back into society and continue their treatment, hopefully to recover from their addiction. Alliance Health was a participant in Durham County's opioid forum, and actually Durham County 
like other counties in the state, uh, was, was tasked by the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, was setting up an opioid forum, mm -hmm. and they looked at this more broadly. They said, we, we understand people aren't just using opioids, and so that's not the only substance use problem we have in our community. So they had a substance use disorder um, forum to look at what the needs are in our community and how best to address those. And the one that was identified as a top need in in um, one of the work groups was to expand opioid use disorder treatment for those that are that are in the detention center. Because we could not do this alone. Alliance, uh, Duke University, and other private partners who are helping us with this uh, MAT program, their support and their resources are absolutely critical to the success of this program. Uh, again, we don't have the resources or the funding to do it alone. They are the experts. Uh, and we simply want to be a part of that process and be a conduit to make sure that the individuals can get connected to the services that they provide. We realized that um, we can't arrest ourselves out of the situation. There's, there's not um, that alone, although there are some, some efforts to, um, uh, to address the opioid epidemic by, um, by looking at prosecution and other, other efforts like that. Um, a better approach is to, to try to look at those that come in and out of our criminal justice system that really would benefit from treatment and for whom treatment would prevent future incarceration, future um, uh, connection with the criminal justice system. Yes, and we sir. find that the, the research shows that if you can get people access to treatment, they're much less likely to engage in, in the detention center in the, f in the future. And our program is going to be divided up into three phases and we're in phase one now. Phase yes. one is individuals that are in the community that get detained for whatever reason that are in a treatment program. They're in a treatment program in the community. Uh, so they either on Suboxone, Buprenorphine, or Methadone. We continue that treatment once they uh, arrive here in the detention facility. And the significance, and I, 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 I'm just ecstatic to be a part of this because it's person-centered. In the, in the world, we call person-centered being able to provide an individual with the medication of their choice to help them in their recovery process. Everyone is impacted when, when a family member is suffering from addiction. So we want to give the family an opportunity, uh, certainly to understand what's going on uh, while they're incarcerated, but again, connecting them with the private provider once they get out. So we really, really are attempting to treat the whole family. And, and once that individual returns to the community, it makes them, uh, it makes the community a better place. Everyone understands what's going on and we just connect all of the dots and the resources. The paradigm has changed about what we find to be effective, what we consider to be evidence-based that will actually help people with substance use disorders. Although the science has moved forward, our, our society really hasn't caught up with the science. And there's still a lot of beliefs about substance use disorders, about what causes them, what maintains them, and also the treatments that are really not, that haven't kept up with the science. So we, we realize, we now see opioid use disorder as a chronic illness, as a relapsing, remitting illness that benefits from medication, and that medication helps people function in society, live productive lives, have productive family relationships and other relationships, maintain work relationships. Well, one of the things that happens when people, when we stigmatize MAT, is those who are receiving MAT believe that uh, this is not a not something they should um, they should stay on, and so they often try to get off the medication. They might be encouraged by family members or even healthcare professionals to stop taking methadone, stop taking Suboxone, to go off those medications. Mm -hmm. We find that when that happens, unless it's a planful approach that's directed by the individual. Uh, it often results in relapse, it can have um, poor outcomes, um, can raise the risk of a fatal overdose. I think first and a, one of the most important goals we have is to save lives. The UNC did a research project last year and found that the risk of fatal overdose for people coming out of a detention setting is 40 times higher in the two weeks after discharge mm -hmm. or after release. So we know that those coming out of, out of the Durham Detention Center at a 40 times higher rate, higher risk of fatal overdose, mm -hmm. unless they're in treatment. A doctor don't give you medication for hypertension for 
two years and say, oh, you're going to be well, we got to take you off. We don't take people off diabetes medicine. We don't, whatever the medication is, we don't take them off. And so we have to look at treatment as the same. It, treatment is treatment is treatment, regardless of what that treatment may be. And so I, I think that's the significance of that. And we, we, we just overall, our community, we have to do a better job eradicating the stigma. Um, I, I think about NAMI's full approach to helping people, advocacy, education, support, and empowerment. And if we can advocate on behalf of people, if we can support, if we can educate our community why people need these treatment modalities, we're going to be the better off. And then hopefully this eradicates stigma. We can no longer run our detention facilities the way we did of old. I, I think we're in a time in our community where we're going to have to invest in citizens that are detained for whatever reason. We, I, I think it's going to be incumbent upon us to try to help these individuals be in a better place when they are released back in the community so that they can be an asset, they, so they can be able to help themselves, their families, a lot of people. You know, just because you get detained don't mean that life stops for you. You you still got your mortgage payment for some people. You still got child care that you got to provide for. So so the significance of just that piece alone, being able to put a person in a better position. This is both one of the most challenging projects and I think one of the most rewarding. And it, it is one where uh, with MAT, you get to see the potential to, to save lives, to re-engage people in their community, to connect people to a path of recovery. Mm -hmm. And it really has a, a, um, a way, has the potential to have a meaningful impact on the community for those who need services the most. I, I, I want to say this. This has been by far the toughest assignment I've ever had in my life but it's probably going to wind up being the most rewarding one because we're going to be able to help a lot of individuals with substance use disorder and be able to turn their life around. I'm very excited about the Durham County Sheriff's Office and our detention center being part of this effort. So I'm looking forward to great things and treating as many people as we possibly can, again, to make a great community for Durham. Excellent. Thank you, sir. At the time, I just wasn't thinking. I used social media to vent. I wish you would have thought about the effects of scaring people. I didn't mean for that to happen. People took it as a terrorist threat. The university got shut down. I got arrested by the FBI. And now, I don't know what my future looks like. I search my name on the web almost every day and look at the stuff. It's not going away. Think before you post. Hey, hey, we're, we're back. back. It's me, Melinda. And me, Dakota. Guess what? Hashtag Melancoda. <laughs> and today we're here to talk to you about the weather. Well, not really the weather, but how the weather pertains to your pets. Now we're in North Carolina, so it's likely to be 70 and sunny today and 20 and rainy tomorrow. So we want to talk about something very important when it comes to your outside pets. Whatever the weather is, by ordinance, your pet must have access, constant access to a shelter. And our definition of shelter means that it's going to have three sides, a floor, a roof, be well ventilated, size appropriate for the animal, and provide adequate protection from the elements. Melinda, can you give us some examples of what would not be considered appropriate shelter? Sure. We've seen some great efforts at providing a shelter, but like Dakota said, we have a specific definition. Things that you cannot use for shelter for your pets are things like temporary airline crates, metal crates like you would keep your pet in indoors, uh, under your porch, under your house, inside cars, under stoops, and anything that's in a flood prone area or an area that's likely to be surrounded by debris. So if you have any of those things, what you need to know is guess what? we can give you a free dog house all you have to do is call our office request a dog house and melinda what's that number that's 919 560 
0630. That's our information line at our office. Please do not use the dispatch line for that. If you would leave your name and your information here, it will get put out so that we will have an officer visit your house and bring you a free dog house. That's all we have for today, folks. So give us a call if you need any help. And until next time, we're signing off. Stay warm. Last year, here at Alliance, we trained over 200 first responders in CIT training. Unfortunately, a lot of the individuals that we deal with on a day, daily basis suffer from either an addiction or a mental illness. Having deputies and officers trained to understand those signs, to understand how to uh, comfort those individuals and de-escalate whatever anxieties uh, they're feeling is critical. Not every day a citizen is going to be having a good day. Sometimes they're going to be in crisis. And we want to teach them how to eradicate the stigma and be able to help people um, so that whatever situation they are placed in is not such a, a traumatizing um, event. Uh, it's, it's being able to talk to them, um, try to empathize with them and relate to them at some point. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of being heard. Um, to really know that we're not here against them, but we're here with them. So well, I work on patrol, um, and I know a lot of people think that, you know, you work on patrol, the first thing you wanna do is arrest somebody. But if I step back out of that, you know, this person committed a crime type of mentality, then I go back into, okay, well, what's really going on here? Am I gonna have to deal with this person again? Is this person going through something else? Are they having a crisis? Are they are they upset? Are they just having a bad day? Or is, something, is there a bigger issue that's going on? So being on patrol, sometimes I step out of myself and say, okay, how can I help you? What, what, what do you really need? And then maybe the best option is for them to go talk to somebody. Maybe they just need a hug that day. I have given out plenty of hugs and um, it has come back to me that people say, oh, you know what, that day you talked to me and then you gave me a hug and it really helped me. I took away from it was not only am I dealing with public or detainees, is what I've learned within myself. Um, the instructors were wonderful. Uh, they kind of went into their backstories on what they've gone through. So it's not even just about the public or citizens, it's about us as officers because we have to go through some of this stuff as well. So we're learning um, what we can do. And uh, not only is there resources for the civilians, there's resources for us as officers. A lady um, was going through a crisis, she had on a robe, she had on shorts and bedroom shoes. And this is in the middle of the day at the bus stop just walking around and she was saying, the most craziest stuff that a normal person wouldn't say, but you wouldn't realize unless you kind of like are um, attentive to that or what's going on, that she needed something else at that time. So that day um, she was kind of combative. Uh, she was running in front of a city bus. So to me, that's extreme, that's an emergency. She might try to kill herself. She can put other people in danger as well because everybody was trying to stop to not hit her. Um, took her to the hospital that day and I remember going to the hospital and talking to her about um, taking her shoes off because the nursing staff needed her to take her shoes off and she didn't want to do it so I found a way to find something on her that she liked. I saw that she liked the color pink and I'm like, hey, you like the color pink? Look at this bag. This bag is pink. Let's put your shoes in this bag because it's your favorite color. And I could see how the nursing staff was looking at me like, oh wow, she really knows how to talk to the lady. So fast forward, I seen that same lady that I helped that day. Um, like a couple of months later and it was her birthday. She said, my birthday's coming up and I just want to tell you thank you that you really helped me that day. Which helps build up a relationship with the community as well because everybody out there saw that I helped her. So a lot of people come to me and say, oh, remember that day you helped that lady? So now they already know, okay, the officers are trained to deal with this kind of situation. So if I have to go through this situation or somebody I love goes through this situation, then I know they will help me. We're getting ready for the Bahama Parade. 
Always enjoy coming up here to be uh, in this parade, participate, love being up here, just, and then just enjoy the fellowship and the camaraderie with everyone up here, seeing all the many floats that are lining up here. We have almost 100 entries, I've been told. So just enjoy this whole community atmosphere in Bahama. Not only do I get to work with a bunch of great deputies that for the, with the sheriff's office, but I also get to bring my family out here, and my family enjoys it. We've been coming for years, and it's just a great family atmosphere. A safe event in downtown Bahama, and we really enjoy it. What do you like about this? Well, I like the Christmas cheer. We get to meet all the citizens of Durham, and we get to show them that the sheriff's office is here to support them in any capacity that we can we for them. Cool was that to get that candy, man? Uh, it's great. <laughs> you gonna have a good Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. You remind me asking how, how come y'all came out here today? Our daughter is uh, with Dance Theater South, okay. and she's uh, in one of the walking troops. Okay, cool. Y'all gonna have a good Christmas? Yes. <laughs> Merry right. Christmas to you too. All right, man. Always want to wish everyone happy and safe holidays and looking forward to 2020. Just finished up my first year as sheriff, and it's a very exciting year and looking forward to great things in the coming year. Durham County Sheriff's Office, where's your emergency? Yeah, okay, we'll get deputies on the way. I'm Durham County Sheriff Clarence Burkhead, and we want you to join our team. Honor, duty, service. If you have what it takes, our recruiting starts now. strikes in Durham County. Do you know what to do? Receive critical, time-sensitive information straight to your device with Alert Durham. Alert Durham provides you with critical information quickly for incidents like severe weather, hazardous materials, evacuations, and more. You can even choose the type of alerts you want to receive and how you want to receive them. Just go to alertdurham.com to register quickly and easily. Stay alert, stay informed, stay safe with Alert Durham.